so Ryan uh, just nicely introduced um, this idea of extracting energy resources and thinking about how to get them around. What I'm going to start talking about is an important major end use of that energy. Um, so I'm going to talk today a little bit about some brand new research. I'm going to focus on one project and get you a little bit of a flavor of what we've been thinking about. So uh, I'm titling this Powering the Pump. So as you might be able to guess, we're going to be thinking about the implications of energy use. Uh, in the agricultural sector through the extraction of groundwater. So how do we think about, when I write grants, I call this the food energy water nexus. It turns out funders really like that term. Uh, this idea that energy is linked not only with environmental concerns itself, but with the production of important goods and services uh, that we like to consume, but that those goods and services also require other inputs that are potentially of interest and importance when we're thinking about a natural resource uh, context. Okay. So, uh, energy is going to be a super important input into agriculture. Uh, farming is something we do both in the US, of course, but also around the world. Uh, the scale of farms differs wildly across the world, right? In California, we're producing sort of the bread basket, or maybe the uh, celery or kale, if you want, basket of the United States. In Illinois, we have the soy and the corn. You can think about smallholder farmers in India and Kenya. Farmers across many of these locations uh, use a large amount of energy and a large amount of water in order to produce their ag agricultural products. And so what you can see from this figure is the um, blue bars here are going to be uh, fuels, lubricants, and electricity uh, as a share of the production of a, a variety of very important crops. And you can see that rice in particular is extremely expensive in terms of energy use. That's because uh, it's going to be something that requires a large amount of labor, but also a large amount of water. Uh, you might not expect this because we think about rice being grown in places like China and Vietnam, where you get sort of a flooded rice paddy naturally. Turns out we also grow rice in California. What? Uh, that's because water is going to be an incredibly cheap uh, input in the Californian context. Great. Uh, so a large share of electricity uh, that's used uh, in the state of California actually goes to agriculture. So around 8% of the electricity used across the entire state is put into ag. That makes sense. Farming is a huge end use in California, a huge industry. Um, but in particular, what is that water in California going to? It's actually going to getting water, sorry, what is that electricity going to? It's going to getting water out of the ground. So around 70% of the state's 8% uh, of electricity that goes into agriculture is actually going into getting water out of the ground. Um, and the state is doing that with over 41,000 groundwater pumps. So this map here of my lovely home state um, shows you these areas in pink. These are parts of the uh, aquifer system, the water basin, that the state has determined to be super critically over extracted. That is A, a very scary word or phrase, <laughs> but B, a designation that the state has put on these groundwater basins to say, hey, look, we're taking water out of these basins at a rate that's unsustainable. We're going to end up uh, at a place where we're not going to be able to farm and not going to be able to use this super rich farmland anymore uh, if we get rid of all the water that's sitting under the ground. So we need to start doing something about it. Uh, this isn't just a California problem. This is a problem that's happening all around the world. So this uh, image comes from an incredibly cool data set. To create these data, what they basically do, there are two satellites that are flying around the Earth all the time together. Uh, when they fly over a very dense thing, think like a mountain, one of them slows down just a little bit because there's more gravity there than there is when you're flying over something that's not quite as tall. Uh, and so that you can measure the distance between these two satellites traveling the Earth uh, to tell you about something about how much mass is in every point over the land. And what you can see, so A, awesome, we can measure uh, sort of how much mass is sitting over, over a particular point on Earth uh, using satellites. But B, what you can see is you can actually look at changes over time. And what you can see is these red areas here, in particular, uh, parts of Southern California, parts of India, parts of the Middle East, are places where we're losing mass. Why would we be losing mass? Basically, the only explanation is we're taking water out of the ground. So you can measure the groundwater losses coming uh, from this water extraction using satellites. So it's an incredible uh, sort of data environment that we're in right now, but also sort of highlights the scope of what we're doing uh, to the natural resource. So one issue is that in many of these places, uh, farmers actually don't really pay for the water that they're taking out of the ground. Um, 
that means they don't have an incentive to conserve that water necessarily. Uh, this is true across the world. So in India, there's actually a lot of farmers who legally get free electricity for agricultural uses. There's some farmers who illegally get free electricity for agricultural uses as well. Uh, and even in California, where we think of as groundwater as a super central resource, it turns out that that water use is uh, neither monitored, there's, so there's no meter on your water extraction. So when you turn the faucet on in your house, your utility company is measuring how much water you're using. Turns out for the groundwater aquifer, no one's doing that for the California farmers. And since no one's monitoring how much they're using, no one is also monitoring how much, or no one is actually charging them a price for that usage. So what we're going to be thinking about is this idea that we can start potentially putting in place policies to reduce the amount of groundwater that we're taking out of the ground. Essential, potentially preferred policy from an economist standpoint would be some kind of pricing instrument. Uh, and so what we want to ask is how responsive might farmers be to the pricing of water, because that's going to be informative about the effectiveness of a variety of different policies. Okay, so we're going to do this using incredibly rich data from the Central Valley in California. So we're working with two major electric utilities in the state uh, to measure electricity consumption for all of their uh, all of their farmers. Why is electricity consumption important? Like I said, uh, energy use. Once you've drilled a well, basically the only cost that you face to get water out of the ground is actually the electricity that it takes to pull that water up from the bottom of the aquifer and into your pumps. So what we have in this data set is electricity use data uh, for all of the farms uh, that are labeled in blue here, uh, and the dark blue ones are the farms with groundwater pumps. As you might expect, right in the middle of the Central Valley, the farming area is where we see a lot of this groundwater extraction. And the reason we're using this electricity data is because it's going to help us solve a central measurement problem, which is because the groundwater is neither metered nor priced, I can't just go and download a data set of how much water everyone's using. So I have to do sort of a clever step of translation to actually count how many gallons the farmers are taking out of the ground. So what I'm going to do for that is to use this data set that we have on hourly electricity use for every farm in the uh, sort of farming region of the state. We have those data from 2011 to 2017. So this is a super long time series of very rich data. Um, and what we also see is for these farmers, we're actually able to observe how efficient their pumps are. We can see for your individual pump how much uh, water you get out of the ground for every kilowatt hour of electricity you put in. So when we combine that pump efficiency measure with this data on um, electricity consumption, we can actually then get a good measure of groundwater consumption. That's been something that's been very, very hard to do. The state is even having trouble doing it themselves. So we think but this by itself is an important innovation in terms of measurement, which can help be informative about policy. We're going to then use those measures of groundwater consumption to get some sense of like, okay, first of all, how much are these farmers using? Turns out this is a lot. Uh, so this is a sense of megawatt hours per non-zero bill. If that doesn't mean anything to you, your electricity usage is usually denoted in kilowatt hours, sort of an order of magnitude smaller units. These farms are using a ton of energy uh, every month. And maybe more interestingly, they're also paying a lot for it. So we have a bunch of farms. This distribution has been truncated. A ton of farms are paying more than $80,000 a year for their electricity. The sort of average farm pay pays something like uh, forty dollars or $50,000 a year. Uh, so these are huge inputs into uh, farm production functions. Uh, and so as like acute illustration, illustration of this, let's think about a particular almond. Uh, what does it take to grow one almond? So the average peak electricity price in California is around 22 cents a kilowatt, kilowatt hour. Turns out the pumps turn one kilowatt hour into about 700 gallons of electricity. Uh, it takes almost two gallons of water to produce a single almond. So I feel guilty about that next time you go to Whole Foods. Uh, and the price of almonds uh, is a little bit less than a cent per almond. It turns out that electricity costs make up around 8% of the cost of producing every almond. So this is something that farmers are thinking really carefully about and potentially optimizing over these electricity prices when they're deciding how much water to take out of the ground and potentially what to grow. So what we're going to do is measure the price elasticity of demand for electricity and water. So if you're not an economist, what is that thing? Uh, it's going to be basically how does a measurement of how does energy use change or how does water use change as we change prices. So to do this, we're going to compare farmer behavior under different pricing setups. 
And so what we're going to take advantage of is variation across farms and across time uh, in what people pay for electricity. So this is a, a sort of chart of different uh, power prices for different types of farmers. And you can see that they're changing over time. So what we're going to be doing is basically comparing farmers to themselves over time and to their neighbors over time to get a good measurement of what's going to happen to their consumption as their prices are changing. So what we find is actually pretty striking. Farmers are extremely price sensitive. So if we measure how price sensitive consumers are, residential consumers are, to the price of electricity, uh, Koichiro Ito, one of our other colleagues here, has a measurement of this. There's been a bunch of papers that have measured this. And typically what we find is that for a 1% increase in price, you, found, you find around a 0.2% decline in usage. So less than one to one. On the other hand, what we find is something that's much more responsive. So in terms of price changes, uh, when the electricity price goes up by around 1%, on the farm, consumption of electricity is going to go down by around 1.2%, even more than one to one. And that relationship holds when we're measuring the water price and water consumption as well. So we're finding that a small change in price can lead to a potentially quite large change in consumption. Uh, and so that suggests that there's a lot of room for policies, particularly thinking about pricing policies or taxes, where we wouldn't have to do that much. No one likes taxes, except economists, maybe. Uh, but we wouldn't have to impose a super large tax in order to potentially get large benefits. That's going to be important when we're thinking about ways to potentially uh, affect water consumption. The other thing that's really nice about this setting is you might think, oh, it's actually going to be hard for the state of California or for other places to actually tax groundwater, because we would have to install a giant metering infrastructure to be able to measure how much people are using. Well, it turns out the, the other thing that we've shown here is that you can actually do quite a good job of measuring groundwater use by using electricity data. That's something that's readily available. And the utilities are typically pricing in a way that's regulated. And so it wouldn't be necessarily that hard to get the electricity regulators to think about adding a little bit of an additional tax on the electricity consumption to reflect the fact that we're not properly pricing the water. Right? So what we're thinking about here is ways to A, leverage large data and B, work in important policy contexts, excuse me, to try and understand ways that we can use tools from economics uh, and tools that we're sort of learning in the classroom here at Harris uh, to think about actually affecting real policy. Uh, my partners and I on this project are in the middle of working uh, with the electric utilities to sort of have those conversations and are eventually interested in also interacting with the regulators who are governing, governing this system. Let's get that. So one thing that we're sort of in the middle of looking at now is to understand exactly why, like I said, this is research that's in progress, is to understand exactly why uh, these farmers are so price sensitive. Is it the fact that when you raise the electricity price, farmers say, OK, I'm just going to grow less this year? Is it the fact that they're trying to find other sources of water? Um, there's a bunch of different things that farmers can potentially do uh, to respond to changing electricity prices. The thing that's also interesting about changing electricity prices or changing the cost of pulling groundwater out of the ground uh, is that it is also reflective of the costs that are potentially associated with climate change. One thing that farmers really need to do in order to adapt to climate change is use additional water to help keep their crops cool. And so if it becomes harder and harder to get that water out of the ground as the aquifer level falls or as the electricity price goes up, that's potentially informative about the future of water policy as well. So one thing that we're interested in looking at here is the extent to which farmers respond uh, by changing both how much and what they're actually growing. Uh, so it turns out that this is kind of shocking to us when we saw this statistic in the first place. Uh, the sort of fifth largest crop in terms of planted area in the state of California is actually not strawberries or tomatoes or lettuce. It's actually alfalfa. That seems like something that is potentially not the best use of the agricultural land in California. But the reason that farmers are growing so much of it is that it's water hungry and water is super cheap. So one thing we're interested in looking at is whether as you sort of make water more expensive, if you actually uh, price that water to reflect the cost of getting it out of the ground and the cost that you're placing on everyone else when you do so, uh, we might actually start to see farmers shifting what they're growing from things like alfalfa to things that are sort of better suited to the Central Valley. Grapes, for example, is something you might want grown in California. So what we're doing to look at that, and this isn't done, so stay tuned for the next version of this, maybe not grand opening of the building, but sort of uh, next set of energy and environment talks from Harris, uh, is 
using really high resolution satellite data to figure out exactly what's being grown. So what I'm showing you here uh, is data that comes from the USDA uh, that shows us uh, exactly what's being grown in a, at a sort of very high resolution set of pixels across the state of California. We've overlaid that with county assessor tax data so we know how to group different fields into farms. So we're not just thinking about one pixel at a time. We can actually evaluate what's going on with a farm on the whole. And we're working at the moment to sort of run the regression that will help us understand whether or not farmers are uh, responding to changes in electricity prices by changing the crops that they're actually growing. So I'll leave you there. Thank you.